Okay, so far up to this point, we've been assuming that all the forces acting on an object have been acting through a single point. In this case, 25 newtons upwards, 25 newtons total downwards as well. So the result of force equals zero. We can say that the vector sum of all the force equals zero, which is the same as saying the result of force equals zero. And it's an equilibrium. Okay, so this is a particular type of equilibrium. This is called a translational equilibrium. You may have come across that word in maths before. It just means of moving up, down, left, right, forward, or backwards. So if it's in translational equilibrium because the forces are balanced, that means that it won't accelerate up, down, left, right, forward, or backward. Okay, it can still move in those directions at a constant velocity, or it just remains at rest according accordance with Newton's laws. Okay, but what about if the same forces aren't acting through the same point, like in this example here? So because it's still 25 newtons upwards and still 25 newtons downwards, it's still in translation equilibrium. However, if we pretend we're in the center here, okay, if we consider that point, you can see that 25 newton force is going to have a turning effect. It's going to cause this object to spin in an anti-clockwise manner. And this, this 20, uh, 15 and 10 newton force is also going to have a turning effect in this direction. So there's what we call a resultant or a net turning effect, or what we call a resultant moment. Okay, moment just means turning effect. Okay, so this object is not in rotational equilibrium. It's going to start to spin um, clockwise in this particular case. Okay, so for object to be in complete equilibrium, it needs to be in translational equilibrium. So the, vec the force, total resultant force, needs to be equal to zero. But also, it needs to be in rotational equilibrium. So that if you add up all the clockwise moments, or in other words, if you add up all the clockwise turning effects it must equal the total of all the anti-clockwise turning effects, the anti-clockwise moments. And this must be true about any point. Okay, so it doesn't matter where we consider moments about, it should be the case, it should be true. Okay, so for example, this is what we call the principle of moments. Okay, uh, this example shows an object which is in both translation and rotational group, because our total upward force is 25 newtons and total downwards is 20, uh, also 25 newtons. And if we consider moments, let's say about the middle, so if we consider the moments uh, about the middle, the turning effects around the middle, we can ignore the 25 newton force. This 12.5 newton force is going to cause it to spin in a clockwise way, and this one here is going to cause it to spin in an anti-clockwise way. So the total turning effects of those two will cancel out, so it will still be in rotational equilibrium. Okay, so we're going to consider these examples and determine if they're in translation and rotational equilibrium. So in this first example, we've got a total force of 10 newtons up acting upwards and only 8 newtons acting downwards. So it is not in translation equilibrium. Uh, to, to consider the rotational equilibrium, I'm going to take moments about the center. Again, if, it, if I'm taking moments about a point, I don't need to consider the forces acting through those points. This force is going to make it go that way. And this one is going to cause it to go that way, which is clockwise, anti-clockwise. And they'll cancel out because they're equal size forces. So it is in rotational equilibrium because the turning effects, clockwise and anti-clockwise are the same. Okay, in the second example, we've got a total of uh, 8 newtons going upwards. And we've got a total of 12 newtons going downwards. So this is not in translation equilibrium. Okay, what about rotational equilibrium? Let's consider the moments around the center again. So this has a total effect. If we add these two up, it's going to be basically 2 newtons upwards. And this one is going to be also two newtons upwards, and the effects of those will be to spin. This one will cause it to spin in a anti-clockwise way, and this one will cause the rod to spin in a clockwise way, and they're going to cancel out. So it is in rotational equilibrium. Okay, the third one here. So the total force upwards. If we add that up, we get eight newtons, and if we add that up, we also get newtons. So it will be in translational equilibrium. What about rotational equilibrium? So if we consider these ones, we can ignore these two forces. Okay, so the result of this will be 2 newtons that way, and the result of this will be 2 newtons that way. Okay, so now these two are both causing the object to spin in a clockwise manner. So this is not in rotational equilibrium. There is a net moment. Okay, the final example here. We take, uh, first let's add up the forces. So we've got 10 newtons downward. And we've also got 10 newtons upwards, so it is in translation and equilibrium. If we take moments about this point here, we can ignore these two forces. Okay. And the resultant effect of this is 2 newtons upwards. So this is going to cause it to go clockwise. And this one is going to have 2 newtons going that way. So it's going to cause it to go anti-clockwise. So this is in rotational equilibrium, so it's in both. 
So an object can be in uh, either or or it doesn't have to be in either either.